Hi, everybody. Russ and my Hammers 11. Hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you know we put new stuff on more than anything. Um, as always, I'd like to thank our lovely channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them out in the description below. Today's guest, I'm very, very excited. It's another X Hammer, and um, we all love talking to the. Um, not being, I'm not being rude. The, the, the older ex players, Brian. The older ex players. Um, it, it's Brian Deer. Um, for that, for the younger fans amongst you, um, Brian played. He made, I think, o- overall about 85 appearances, two spells at the club, 39 goals, um, including five goals against West Brom. We'll probably talk about that in a minute. It's the fastest ever haul for five goals in the English game. And more importantly, was part of the 94, 94, no, you wish, 64, uh, 64, 65 European Cup winners team, scoring in the semis and playing in the final. How are we, Brian? How are you, my friend? I'm good. Good. And um, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Thank you. I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. How has um, how has the last, what was it, year been in terms of lockdown for you? Hard. Um, mm. Because I like to get about. Um, yeah. You know, I've, I've got a local golf club I belong to close by. I do ambassadorial work for West Ham and South End. I was run, looking after a little pub two days a week. I was working down the cockle sheds in Lee. So, you know, I was always on the move. And all of a sudden, bang, it's, it's like yeah. trying to get out of an iron door. It is. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy how it all just like the world got flipped on its head in the matter of a few weeks, really, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. It was tough, and I'm no no do it yourself, no gardening, yeah. a bit like Harry. <laughs> We're not my wife. <laughs> yeah oh, good old sergeant yeah but i mean yeah it's uh i know what you mean it's it's been it's been tough um but i mean you know the, the flip side you know it, there's always a, a silver cloud yeah west ham are doing all right we're doing all right at the moment unbelievable and no one can go and watch it well, <laughs> look at we're missing i know i mean i'm still there i still i'm there every game playing playing the music so still playing bubbles so they can they know they're playing up to at london stadium rather than an away ground but uh yeah it's weird it's weird it is weird at the moment and uh yeah and this will be going out after the tottenham game so hopefully we'd have beaten tottenham as well which would have been lovely yeah it's, um, well after the result there three all i mean that's yeah good. But, i mean I don't, we, not been playing that smooth football, but he's got them playing to a way that they can all cope with, and um, mm. it, it's been brilliant. I mean, it really has. I mean, everyone's pulled their weight. I mean, you know, got a couple of more players in, and um, we, we keep going up and down behind Chelsea, yeah, up than six points off of us. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? But I'd rather be doing that than up and down against, you know, I don't know, uh, Brighton, you know, or something like that. Up against Chelsea, I'll take that. I'll take that at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. And it's nice, actually, when you when you go onto, like, the web BBC website and you, you click on the table and we're just, like, there. You don't have to scroll down to the bottom. We're just there at the top. It's a, it's a bizarre thing. It's a bizarre thing for a, a, a modern day West Ham fan to be uh, to be used to, to be honest. But uh, probably long it's because it's modern day football, isn't it? Yeah, it it's, is. It's, it's a it's a weird season, isn't it? Yeah, weird. It's a weird season. I mean, it's one of those things where you know, there's no. I mean, form is just out the window. It seems apart from Man City. It's just out the window for everyone else. Um, so I think anyone could be anyone in their day, it seems, at the moment. So anyway, we'll see. Maybe maybe, maybe we'll, we'll dust off that passport for next year, hopefully. A bit of European football. Who yeah, knows? That would be, that'd be, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I think the next few games are crucial for where we finish this season. But, yeah, we've you know, hard ones coming up, haven't we? we do. We do. But, I mean, the fortunate thing is, I know there was a lot of disappointment about being, you know, not going and losing to Man United in the cup and stuff, but we're back to playing one game a week rather than playing two games a week. And all the other people we're playing are against Leicester's and Arsenal's and people like that. They're on two games a week. So we should be fresher. You would hope. But then again, at Manchester, it was, it was only one, one, def, one defender in the last minute of the game. And we could have walked away with him. Winning one yeah. Yeah. Um, Indeed. I mean, considering as well, you know, I mean, back to that Man United game as well, you know, how many, I mean, you know, 
we only had our first choice centre backs for about fifteen minutes. Um, we kept yeah, on yeah. shopping and changing them in it, so uh, yeah. I don't think it was it was as, as as tragic as some people made out. And uh, yeah, it was only you know we took Man United to. Didn't he? Or did he yeah, play? Or not? no, he didn't play. He didn't play. Yeah. He struggles a bit, the lad. With his... He's very muscular, isn't he? That's the trouble, isn't it? And I yeah. Because they're much, and he is literally just like I mean you've seen him I mean you, you obviously know he's he's literally just one he is huge isn't he he's just yeah, one he muscle, muscle and, uh, yeah and I think when 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 you hand uh, also you know I mean you know as well you know when you know he has uh, I think when footballers tend to when their hand when their when their hamstring goes I don't think it ever heals prop you know hundred percent and I think that always leads to him maybe being a bit tentative well, when it comes to especially. Money is when they're, you know, a big benefit to the side, they want to get them ready as quick as possible. And, you know, yeah. maybe look at what's happening with Tottenham at the moment. Harry don't go away yesterday, but Harry wants to be fit for Sunday. Yeah. Um, which is a bit cunning, but... Um, it is, it is. But um, I, I think we I think we did the same thing with Van Antonio against Sheffield United, to be honest. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, as I say, we it's... It's entirely different now to to when I played. Yeah, you know, the treat room rooms and what they can get and what they can't get and what's available to them. You know, scans and God knows what. I know. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. We used to, if we had a cold, we used to have to put a tracksuit on and wrap ourselves up and do twenty laps and sweat it out. <laughs> up to <the> park. <laughs> so going back to that because I'm. So get out oh, it's brilliant. Oh, get it out. Get it out of the track. Yeah, just sweat it out. God dear. Yeah, sweat it out. Going back to to the to, to your playing days, obviously. So yeah, we go over a bit of old ground because because people might not necessarily, you know, the, 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 the less experienced fans I call them. Um so you you know, you went back and you I mean you signed when you when you're fifteen, you know, from you know, from uh playing England, you it represented England schools and stuff like that. You know, you're a plasto boy by heart. Um was it always going to be West Ham you played for, or was there ever any other clubs sniffing round for for for, for your uh, your signature? Um, well, I was born in Plasto. Yeah, but I lived in East Ham, um, and I went to uh, the, the, an infant school at Central Park, a junior school, Brampton Road. And Boise and I played in the same side together Brilliant. at Brampton Road. And we only lived five minutes from one another. I mean, I think I probably might have been the closest to living to the ground. I mean, you could walk out of our door, you go 100 yards up the road, and now 200 yards, and you're at the back of the stand. Brilliant. Um, and I just played, you know, for the school team with Boise, played for the district side. And then I got represented with, uh, with Essex Honours, London schoolboys, England schoolboys, with Martin. And Martin was at them at the time so we used to see one another quite a lot um through our young you know school daddy football yeah but um no there was nothing no one I don't, I don't, no one really um bothered my dad well there was there was a funny thing happened there was a, a fellow who used to play uh, for west ham a center forward and um he was in charge of barking and he got my dad to sign some forms um, what we didn't realise was that when I wanted to go to West Ham, we, me and my dad had to go to the offices of the FA to get it annulled so I could start sign as a prince. <laughs> <laughs> so much for my dad, my agent. <laughs> Your agent. Brilliant. And I, you know, we, I just went on, I went there in 59. And we were lucky. I mean, all those lads who, who I was with, you know, like Harry said the other week, you know, I went with Martin, David Bickles, Charlo, you know, Derek Woodley was still around then, um, Eddie Presland. We we were all local boys. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was just like your old school chums. Yeah. Um, it was, it was fantastic. And, on that ground stuff and only used to look after us but today the kids they don't have to do nothing you know i mean it's nah. they're so well looked after yeah we, yeah they, we, they we had to um we had to take kits well, i mean we had to we had to go to grange farm we had nowhere to train 
Uh, wow. Good. I mean, you used to have to get a lift to go his farm. You used to have to look after half a dozen, lots of kits for players. I mean, you was lucky. I had Andy Malcolm and a couple of the other boys, um, Jackie Dick. And Christmas time, they used to make sure you got a little few tips off them. And we used to have our lunch at Grange Farm. And when you got in there, it looked as though a load of gannets had been at the grub. But then <laughs> Andy used to come and find a little, give you a little plate of food. The water was like soot when you got in it to have a bar. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really was. It was an amazing. And, and we, we trained there for, for quite a while. It wasn't until um, the 60s, early 60s, that they, they brought the training ground up of Allen and Hanbury's because that was all uh, Greenbelt. Yeah. They built a little school next door. And then Ron was, was with us then, of course. And all we had there was when we first went there, we had some cricket pitches, we had some football pitches, we had tennis courts, and we had a clubhouse with two lots of dressing rooms, two bathrooms, and a little place where you could make a cup of tea, and, and that was it, it was a shed. Now, they've spent like two million pounds on that, and it's absolutely state of the art. I mean, I went to the to the opening of that with, with Trevor and um, Tony Cutty, and, it's amazing what they've got there now. I mean, yeah. from from those days, but you know, we were we were quite lucky at that time to have a training ground. Yeah, and um, you know, it's when, when, go on. No, you carry on, man. You carry on. No, I'm, right. just, I'm just saying, no, when, rubbish. Are you? When I got married, we all lived around um, in Hall Church. Jeff, Martin, myself. Johnny Sissons, yeah. Les Allen lived around there, Jimmy Greaves was around there, so we only had like 10 minutes or so to get to the training ground a day. I mean, in the winter when we couldn't get on there, we used to have to drive to Harlow oh. to a gym. And we've never got no petrol money, no <laughs> expenses. <laughs> I mean, you, you imagine, can't you, like from, from Chevrolet to Harlow of the morning, it was like... yeah. Down the Chelmsford 414, right the other side. But it was handy. And then of course when we were when we weren't there, we used to go, if we was at the ground, we used to go to the um roller skating rink at Forest Gate and train there. And that was a really big area there. Yeah. And they just balled up the side where when we played one touch or two touch, you could bang it against the ball and get the ball back. So that was one of your touches. Yeah, I mean, there's so many ideas, and it was amazing. I mean, as Harry said, he, he was he was coaching her half. He was, he was an incredible fella. Yeah, I mean, no, Ron yeah. never asked you to do what you couldn't do, but made you better than what you were good at. And, really, you know, he, that was with all players. Mm. And um, you know, he, we had a great time in the grand staff. In the summer, we used to have to work. We, you know, build making steps, clip. Sand in the pitch, sowing the grass on the pitch, painting the crash barriers, and the times you'd be doing there and put your head up by mistake and end up with a great big black eye where you did it against the old bar of the crash barrier. And we used to end up full of paint. We used to have to change down in, in the boiler room where the, um, the groundsmen were. Oh, we weren't allowed yeah. in the dressing rooms. And um, Ernie used to. Do, Ernie was with us in in the summer there, but uh, it was all a, it was a good it was a good time. It was a good upgrade yeah. for six yeah. quid a week. It's crazy, pounds, isn't it? Tax. Yes. Tax. <laughs> I had a bike. It's, it's... I used to go. To, I used to go to work. Go to the ground on a bike. I bought myself one of them. You know, the, the speedway bike, the track bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chopper. E. G. Bates in Barking Road. I think it was about 10 shilling deposit and a dollar a week <laughs> with, a big, with the big bars out on the front of it. <laughs> and I used to go, go down to the ground in that. Look, well, I, now look at, look, Martin you see the plate. Well, to have a car of all us. Really? He had a, I think he had an Anglia, Ford Anglia. I mean, I'm, I didn't have a car until I was 21 years old. Yeah. And, um, but um, they were great days. And, uh, yeah. 
I mean, you look. Yeah. I mean, you, as you said, you, you you turn up to the ground in a in, a, in your in your chopper. You know, look at look at what you know. All the cars oh, in the in the pla- in the in the players' car park now. Oh, how the world, how the game's changed. Fridays, we used to have to clean all the dressing rooms out. Really? Yeah, wow. and the bars. And um, we we had a a gym there where which which wasn't the gym at one time. It, there was a snooker room in there. The players, and we used to have to brush the table and. And everywhere was brass, brass taps on the bars, brass taps on the doors. And Billy Moore used to walk around after there was a fag in his mouth and flick the ash on the floor like it's ash down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Come amazing. Over for our lunch. Yeah. And then we, we, because we, we, we didn't go to Casataras in those days until a bit yeah. later on. Then we used to get these little vouchers for a dollar, yeah. five shillings. And, um, Sit upstairs and have our ham, egg, and chips. Is that is that what, what is that what you could get for for your, for your voucher? Yeah, was that was the we get ham, egg, and chips and the pudding for a nice. dollar. I mean, this was in 1950, 1959, yeah. 60, 61. But when we was at the training ground, we used to have a company uh, from uh, Forest Gate, I think, somewhere that used to mm. deliver the food, and we'd end up getting a coach. Going to Epping Forest, getting out of the coach in just a pair of shorts and slippers and a top, and then run round the forest, run down the Epping Road on a slab of concrete about three foot wide with great big lorries going by, spitting everything out of us. And then we used to go through the forest, running through the forest we run, and then coming back to the roundabout of the Wake's Arms, and they used to have a, yep. a pub there. And there was yes. A, a tap on the wall, and we used to get a drink of water. Oh, no, and he used to go, Don't have that, do you? Stomach muscles, don't you? But yeah. now, they have, now they have water breaks. Yeah. And we used to go back to Grange Farm, get out of the coach, and have to run up the hills from the back of the farm up to the top of the tube wall, and then yeah. stop again at the lakes by um, the golf course. Yep, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. At Haynall. Run yeah. all around there, and when we got back to the training ground, we'd have a roast dinner. <laughs> a roast dinner, <laughs> and, then, and then go out in the afternoon training again. <laughs> oh, amazing! Now they wouldn't look at a roast dinner. I mean, nah. they've got all these special stuff they take and eat, and God knows what before the game. <laughs> pre-match, we never had a pre-match. We had to be at the ground. If we played at home, we used to have to be at the ground. An hour and a half or so before the kickoff. Yeah. And we used to just turn up one by one. Yeah. Now they have coaches, they go to hotels and even the lower clubs. I mean it's yeah. It really is a different game now. It's yeah. I mean, miles, million miles apart from, from our oh, of course. Yeah, of course. I love I love the fact you do all that running. Because I mean, I live in Ornchurch now, but I used to live in Loughton. So I know all that area you say, oh, Wake Arms yeah. roundabout. Right yeah, and so I literally, yeah, I can. I, that, that is a long route, and then all of that, and then, <laughs> and then meeting two veg. Well, <laughs> when we were at Grange Farm, we used to have to go down Pudding Pudding Lane. Yeah, that Pudding Lane down the other side. That's a horrible road. Ted, Ted Fenton used to have a, a claret and blue console with WHU one on the plate, and he used to stand on the bonnet with a pair of binoculars. So they could see over the fields to see where we were. <laughs> like, I, used to, I, mean, I was quite good. Andy, Andy Smiley, who was in, um, just left the ground staff then. Yeah. Um, he was a good guy. I used to run in boots. But I, I was okay in them days. And I, I used to be home first most of the time. El, Albert Walker would be waiting there for you to give you a little clap, you know, when you got there. <laughs> and then, um, but. Uh, it was now, I mean, and our equipment, or sometimes if there was nowhere to train, we, we used to sometimes go to Wansley Flats. We used to go out the back yeah. of the ground, in Priory Road where the bus goes, us, run yep. all the way down to the flats, run all the way around the flats, and then skins and shirts and have a game, and then run back to the ground. That's crazy, and, isn't it? I know, in slippers. <laughs> and then we train. Mental. I can't. 
Little Ilford Lane, you know where the um, Fairbanks Boys Club used to be? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We used to, where the gas works are there, the gas, thing, gas yeah, boy. Yeah. And that was that was like a quagmire down there because we just <laughs> we just didn't have anywhere to, to play games was, until, of course, Chad Leith. As I said, Chad yeah. Leith come along, and that was the start. That was that was that was you know a bit prehistoric. I mean. One groundsman, mm. and um, but we seemed to do well out of it. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. We used Monday and Wednesday. We used to have um, a fella come to do. He was a, a weight a, a weightlifter. Bill Watson, his name was. Yeah. He used to go to Aston Villa. Went to Tottenham, and um, we used to do like with the dumbbells and stomach exercises, and um, <laughs> then. We used to, have to just go off training, and but it, it was it was great. I mean, we had we had great fun in those days. And yeah, then, it's incredible time. They were, they were, they I mean, you had, I mean, well. yeah, I mean, you had great lads, and you know that was a period in West Ham sort of history. That was you know a, a golden age of West Ham. I mean, well, you know that was. I always say to people, we were we were really lucky to have to go there when I went there in fifty nine. Mm. We just got promotion that year before, haven't we? Yeah. And those guys are absolutely amazing. Bondi and Noel and Malcolm, Andy Malcolm, Malcolm Musgrove, Jackie Dick, Mike Grice, Phil Woosen and Johnny Smith. I mean, we were so lucky, as, in, as, as we were then, to go into a club in the, in the first division. You know, we yeah. start off in third divisions or second division. We was a first division side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was amazing. Um, and we had one one guy, Wallace and Pierre, one scout, never had a car. <laughs> Used to walk everywhere. You know, all the times of the buses. And Brilliant. Wally was responsible for bringing ninety percent of the players in. I mean, we to 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 West Ham. You know, as kids and. You know, because I used to train Tuesday and Thursdays. Malcolm, Noel, and Johnny Bond used to help with the training on Tuesday and Thursdays at the ground. And um, you know that was that was the way we were at in those days. Mm. But they were great times. And you know, from from when you think I was in '59, I made my league debut in '62, '63, '62 at Wolves. I mean, in the next three or four years. Oh. Um, there with him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it was just, and there was no subs in those days. No, no, no. You know, you, you, you had to be sort of <laughs> very lucky in those days because yeah. we, we had some, we had a really good bunch of players and sides were normally quite settled then. Mm. I mean, yeah. you know, we, we I played lots of reserve games, of course, and we had an upbringing of um, I had the A team, which was a metropolitan league. And we used to play all over the place. Did cop? I mean, who want to go to Did cop? Bedford, <laughs> Haywards, he, Tombridge, but all the London clubs would have a team in, in in that division as well. Yeah, and they never give a shit about it, mate. They oh. us little boys in our nice white shorts and everything. They used to lump us all over the place, but you picked that up quick and you learned to look after yeah. yourself. Sure. And um, you know, when 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 I did sort of get farther on in the side, I mean, it was as I say, I only had eighty five odd games um, spread over that time, but it was tough. To, you know, it was tough to get in that side. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jeff, Jeff. Look at Jeff for an example. Jeff started as a halfback. Yeah. A big raw boned halfback. Yeah. And, and there's no way he was going to take Bobby's part. No. But then, when when Ron bought Budgie, and Jeff went up front with him, that was the making of Jeff. He yeah. Was, uh, he lived off a of Budgie. Mm. Um. And we had. You know, leading up 64, I didn't play many games in 64. No. It was after the Blackburn game when we got beat at home. Martin was the only one to get dropped from that side, wasn't he? 
Yeah, I believe so, yeah. And I think he went to see Ron and said, you know, he said, well, I was the only one to get dropped. He said, well, you never played very well. He said, well, was I the only one when you get B8? <laughs> and that side kept the same. Eddie Bobbin went in the side and done great. But then, you know, you looked at that side, you know, you had Bondi, who came to us from a very small club mm. in Colchester. You had Jim Standen, who cost us 10 grand. You had Bondi, nothing. Um, Eddie Bovitton, nothing. Brownie, nothing. Bobby, nothing. Yeah. Jack Burkett, nothing. Johnny Scissors, nothing. Jeff, nothing. Boise, nothing. Peter, 35 grand. And Budgie, 65 grand. Where could you get yeah. three? Where could you go and spend 110 grand on three players? <laughs> What would you get now? Exactly. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to buy a new car. No, you wouldn't be able to. It's and, incredible, isn't it? It's just, and, and obviously, as you said, at that, that time, and, you know, you, you mentioned, obviously, some of those great players, you know, we had, you know, and, and you know, as you said, you, you spoke about, this, about, about the about the great man. Um, and obviously that period, you as part of that, that team that obviously, you know, we had obviously the European Cup, um, Cup Winners Cup victory and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it's 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 a huge it's a huge time, a huge historic period of West Ham, and obviously, obviously, following that, obviously, the World Cup uh, with with the, with the three of them. I mean, as a player, I mean, I have to ask a question because I don't feel I'm ever going to speak to someone who played with with, with with them at that time. Really, do you remember the after they won the World Cup? The three of them. Do you remember the first training? Well, how, you know, because I'm thinking, you know, because it's like that they were put on this level. Yeah, you, you know, you, you won the World Cup, fantastic. And then they came back to West Ham. Do you remember the first time they came back as World Cup winners? Seems a silly question, but I don't know whether you, you know. Does everyone clap well, or does everyone just summer, carry on as normal? That was in the summer. Yeah. Listen, we never had no big time Charlies. Yeah. In those days, internationals were midweek. They'd go off a couple of days. There was no great hype about this and that. And the day after the game, they come back and we're training. Back again. normal. Yeah. Um, but no, I, 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 there was no different when they come back from the World yeah. Cup. In fact, it was quite good. When they had the World Cup, they all got these white cars, <laughs> hundred the 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 hundred E's. You know, they don't what they the the, the Cortinas. Yeah. Sure. Um, with special wheels and a World Cup willy. And Bobby went off on holiday and I had the car for, for about a month. <laughs> I had the car to drive about. <laughs> it was amazing. Martin had one, Jeff had one. But, I mean, the next day when, after, the, after the World Cup, when they got home, some Rolls Royce come round to Jeff and whisked him off somewhere. Yeah. And that was the start of, of that. Yeah. I mean... The adulation they got was amazing, but they of course yeah. they really deserved it. I mean, mm. and they were just a, a really. I mean, I imagine. I mean, I played against all them players, and they was all good mm. fellas. Yeah, I mean, that they was all great fellas. But I mean, yeah. the sixty after the sixty four, we I didn't play much that season, even in the sixty five, mm. and then right out the blue, um, they played one or two. I think they they played the Czech side, yeah. And another, and that, and another side in that competition in the European Cup's Cup competition, and um, the the next round was against the Swiss side. Yeah, was it Lausanne? Um, Lausanne? I can't be. I don't. I'm not, not very good. What were you, what were you saying? What was it? What was the team? What was the, What was the Swiss team called? Was it? Was it? The was it because I know you Lausanne. played against Lausanne, Lausanne. That's it, Lausanne. That's it, Lausanne. Yeah. Well, the, the day they should have played um, Lausanne, it yeah. was cancelled because uh, I think there was a snow-covered pitch at the time. Anyway, the next game at home was Sunderland. Mm. Um, Budgie, there was an international, and I think. Ron wanted to um, rest budget. And I was, you know, some people must have told you, I was a bit lively, I was a bit hard to handle, you know. 
Um, and we told you all about kind of the pubs and God knows what. And I mean, yes, I was, I was always sort of fingered as one of the instigators, with two or three of the others. But um, and I'd I'd had I'd had a bit of a barney with Harry and Colin McAuliffe that week in at, at the um, skating rink, and I thought, oh, here we go. He said, Ron wants you out on the pitch. Only said, Ron wants you out on the pitch. So. I thought, here we go. So I went out there. I said, what's up? He went, um, I'm resting budget tomorrow. He said, I'm playing you tomorrow against Sunday. And I thought, blimey. So I went, yeah. He said, um, okay. I went, yeah, fine. He said, okay, then proceed tomorrow. So we ended up getting beat 3 2. I scored both the goals. Yep. Eddie Bodrick broke his kneecap. So I was in the bath in the plunge. And he came in. He said, well done, ladies. He said, all right, stay. I said, yes, well done. He said, um, you're coming to Lausanne with us tomorrow. So I went, no. I said, well, I ain't coming if I ain't playing. He went, just be here in the morning for the coach. So off I went. I scored the opening goal there, Budgie got yeah. one. And that was it. The side never changed. We come home and um, I've got the five against West Brom. I've got four against Shilton that, that year. Yeah. Um, I mean, I scored, I think, I don't think it was 13 or 14 goals in 15 games. Yeah, in that season, yeah. Couldn't leave me out in yeah. the end. And, of course, we had the final. But, I mean, from the from the FA Cup final, I mean, you had Johnny Bond, Kenny Brown, mm. Bobby, Jack, Johnny Sissons, Hursty, Boise. You mm. had sort of um, eight, seven, eight people who were grand start boys yeah. playing in that final. And the next season when I got in, no, no, no Peter. Uh, Alan Seeley played, but he was when um, Ted got sacked, the chairman swapped Dave Dunmore for Alan Seeley, so he yeah. came just before Ron. And Joe Kirkup played, so he was another one. I was another one. And, you know, we, we had eight or nine in that side. I mean... Crazy. We had, I mean, West Ham have always, you know, we always said they called them the academy. But yeah, when you look back then to see um, 22 players, like 90% of them were homegrown lads from just mm. ordinary backgrounds, no fee, West Ham's training ground today is phenomenal. Yeah. But you never see these kids coming through like that. Not I mean, like that. I no. know that because because as time's gone on, we you know the the, the, the foreign players that have come into this country, you know, there's yeah. been amazing players come in. I mean it's like even now, like the two boys we got, Kufel and um the other and the other guy. Suchek. Suchek. Yeah. I mean they've been a revelation for us. Yeah. I mean uh, Wayne was not that, you know, nobody thought much of him until the manager got hold of him and he's made him a, he's made him a different player. Yeah. You know I mean, but with all the big clubs, they've all got great academies, but you haven't looked through them. How many of them boys mm. have, have come, come into the big side? It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it is. And where do they all go? Where do they all end up? I mean... Yeah. You know, you look it's, at the likes of, of Trevor and Harry and all, all that lot. Yeah. As Harry said the other week, that side, that youth side here yeah, was, was unbelievable. It was, Everyone yeah. And ended up in mid national. And we ended up in the. Uh, uh, I mean, it, you, could, you could call him, he was a foreigner when he came from Liverpool. Uh, yeah, technically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as a kid, <laughs> outside of it, you know, probably. The best centre half West stand have ever had. Yeah. You know, in, in one one things at the club and still around the club, you know, made his yeah. life in the south of England. Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah. I mean, we still were very, very, and most of our lads were I mean, Johnny Sissons come from by Heathrow. I mean, I think he might have been the farthest one away. Eddie Bobbitton and um Jack Burke and that 
used to come on a bus of a morning. <laughs> Coming from, from North London. <laughs> Bobby used to get the bus. Amazing. Like, it was all right for me, I could walk. But then yeah, or, 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 or the bike. Or the bike. Yeah, or the bike. So <laughs> we we were so fortunate to, to have That's our incredible. careers at that time. I mean, it's incredible. We know there are a fortune, but then that's that's life. I mean, you can't. Yeah. But now it's astronomical. I mean, I'm looking at oh, the paper today. They won 150 million if Harry Kane leaves. I mean, yeah. look at Harry Kane. Harry Kane is the, probably the best goal scorer in in world football at the moment. Mm. I mean, then, you know, he's got golden boots, Harry, and ain't got nothing to put in up in the wall. Yeah. You know, it's and, true. It's true. Long may it continue, Brian, as well. Long may that continue as well. Well, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can't take that. I know what you mean. I mean, he, yeah. he, 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 I've never met him, but, he, you know, he comes across as being a really nice fellow as well. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, he does a lot of good things, but not so many good things on Sunday if he plays. As long, yeah, as long as he doesn't do them on Sunday, I don't care, Brian. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Back, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, for you... You know, obviously, we, we we touched on that on the on the, the European Cup winners' cup final, but walking out, what, what was it? I mean, you know, we I haven't spoken to many people who have walked out of Wembley with ninety eight thousand people there. Oh, well, that, that's a, I mean, yeah, I mean, it must I mean, have been when, incredible. When, you, when I think back, when we played Lausanne in the second game, we beat them four two. Yeah, and I wasn't aware at the time of this away goal. Um. um with up until 10 minutes or so to the end of the game, they would have gone through on the, on the way goals. Yeah. And I ended up getting the win, getting another goal, which put us through. And then yeah. when we played Zaragoza, we won 2 1 at home and we was losing 1 0 away. And uh, Johnny Sisson's got the equaliser, which took us yeah. through on that as well. Yeah. But, you, you know, that, that's not something you, you don't really think about that at the time. Nah. And, of course, then, with the, with the game at Wembley, that was amazing. We went off, when, when, we, when we won the Cup in 64, we went to Hendon Hall, they, the, the players went to Hendon Hall the night before, and, and so we done, we done the same thing. Um, and it was it was amazing. It, was, it really was. I mean, but it was not, you know there was not the fuss then as there is now. No. Yeah. You know they walk around in track suits and God knows what. We was all wearing our own clothes. <laughs> track suit. They come out now with track suits and God knows stuff on. Yeah. And then you know we went we went to the stadium. We had to walk around the stadium and. Um, it was just like an ordinary game run, just come around and have a chat with us all and, and off we went. And I just yeah. made sure I managed to get behind Bob with the ball. Um, and it, it, it was fantastic. I mean, yeah. and the game went so quick. I mean, I scored early on and disallowed. Maybe VAR might have, VAR might have <laughs> given me the goal. <laughs> and, um, and then Sammy got the two goals. I mean, the goalkeeper, have you seen the film? The goalkeeper comes yes. out at 30 yeah. yards and smashes me to the floor. These days, he'd have been off. He'd have been off, yeah. Then we just got up and, and shook hands Carried and on. he went back in goal. <laughs> but um, that was a great night. Yeah, really, it was a great night. Yeah. And um, Ron was chuffed. And we're all chuffed because... They had that poll, didn't they? The greatest ever West Ham game, and in 125 years at the club, and it won't. It yeah. might not have been the greatest game to everyone because it's time and time and time goes on. I mean, I thought True. maybe the one when we beat Leeds seven 0 in the League Cup that time, that that side were unbeatable, and, we, mm. and that night we absolutely slaughtered them. Um, but it's nice and um, to to have that behind us as well. Definitely, but, um, definitely. But uh, you know, I, my career wasn't that long. But you know, I went off to Fulham for a while, didn't I? I didn't like that. I yep. didn't like travelling. You know, no. from Jersey to Fulham. Um, 
the Millwall was a disaster. Yeah. Um, and then when I when I came back, I just used to go to the training ground and that is seen and theirs. And then out of the blue one day, because I played, I went to play for Woodford. I went to play for Woodford, and Bob Wheatley, who owned Circus Tavern and everything, was sponsoring yep. hundred pound a week. I never got, I never got more than about forty quid a week at West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> like with appearance and it went up a bit and I there I was playing in Woodford Avenue in yeah. some nondescript league for 100 quid a week uh, again Crazy. didn't have to train well train once a week but um yeah when I when I went back I was over the ground as I said and uh Ernie came out he said Ron wants to see you inside and I thought he was going to tell me not to keep coming over the training ground and he went sit up down and he sat I sat there and he went would you like to come back? I thought, my yeah. God. And because um, I had a terrible time at, at um, Millwall, I hated it. Yeah. And um, so I, I come back and got in the side. And Benny Fenton bumped into Ron one day and he said, So I go to all the games, Ron. He said, and I've seen Brian playing in the reserves, he's getting goals, he's never scored for me. And so Ron said, Perhaps you didn't know how to handle him. <laughs> But, um, and then of course, we had the fateful Blackpool thing, didn't we? Indeed. We, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there was all these stories about, we thought the game was going to be off. Of course the game wasn't going to be off, but, yeah. you know, we, we had dinner. We had a few beers. We didn't, we didn't get drunk. We weren't drunk or anything, but we got back to the hotel. And you know what these guys in the hotels are like. You know, they, now, if they see someone walking a hotel in London with a bird on their arm, they're straight onto a yeah. snapper and he's in there on his motorbike or whatever. Exactly. And there's a photo of it in the paper the next day. And I, it really, it wasn't the thing to do, but it got blown out of proportion. Yeah. Um, and I suppose, you know, Ron was under a bit of pressure. Yeah. Um, and he, he done what he felt he had to do. And, and that was that. I mean, mm. Clyde was young. He got away with it. Rob, uh, Bob Garden was with us. Who, who used to do match of the day? He was with us, <laughs> and a couple of his mates. I mean, but um, and so that that was it. That was the end. I'll finish there. That was yeah. That was a lot. Jim packed up, um, and I packed up. Bit of shame, yeah. but uh, there you go. But you know, I enjoyed. You know. I'm still West Ham. I still go. I still love them. And uh, exactly, you know, I'm lucky to be able to with a great bunch of lads who the ambassadors. They are really heavy. Yeah, they're a good bunch. Yeah, we've had a few of them on. <laughs> and, um, they're crazy. And I'm the oldest. Yeah, you would uh, noticed. Yeah, you probably will be. brought yeah, you probably are. Right, aren't you? Well, not, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Steve Jones quite old. And Jimmy, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're quite old. Yeah. They're all, they're all from sort of different. Sort of there is different sort of personalities and they're, they're, yeah. they're good fellas. And, um, they are good, yeah. I go to a few of the 86 boys things. You know, they, they were a great side, but yeah, you know, they, great sides always don't always win things, do they? No, they don't. They don't. And I mean, you know, it's sort of, it's one of those things where, as you said, it's a generational thing as well, isn't it? And yeah. so, you know, we have, I mean, we have loads of, I mean, we interview fans from you know fans fans from 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 your era so to speak fans from the 70s the 80s the 90s and all you know and and so and that, that's the whole point of sort of that the whole channel is to talk to different fans about their experiences because you know listening to you brian and your stories someone who's 15 20 you know even even my i mean i'm i'm, I'm almost and i don't look it but i'm almost 40 um my uh my, my beautiful child um it, it's it, I, find, I find it so fascinating about learning about the history of West Ham, learning about, but from first hand, from yourself, not from, you know, reading a, an article someone's written about it who wasn't there, listening to what you're saying. And I just find it absolutely fascinating. And it is a generational thing. And when we do the stuff around the the, the players from, from, you know, older eras, people really love it because it's it's all part and parcel of the fabric of West Ham, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, as I said the other week, what would, could have become a West Ham if they hadn't sold all those boys? Of course, I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. Look at look at the joy that other clubs have had out of us. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. And then, you know, when Harry was there and he brought Paolo in and all those people, no one wanted Paolo. I said yeah. the, the thing on um, my phone, I threw a blowing bubbles, and <laughs> that referee came to South End one day, and just as I went to speak to him, my phone went, and it started playing bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he looked at me, I went, I'm oh, sorry, I said, this is, this is not on purpose. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, and even, like, Gally and all, all, all this lot. Yeah. And they come just, they came at a real time when, you know, what they do with their nights and things took off. Yeah, Len, Because there was yeah, no yeah. hospitality at West Ham. Um, yeah. But they were all there at that time and they've had a lot of success and they've all, you know, done their good things out of that. I mean, we, we have golf days. Um, yep. But, I mean, the only thing that annoys me with Gary is when they have these nights, he keeps mm. giving golden boots away to people. David Cross, Pop Robson, this one, that one, Sir Trevor. I mean, I'm sure my father goes in 20 minutes it's worth a golden boot <laughs> well it's the fault david cross got one and he's a lovely 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 fella oh, I love Gossie, got yeah. four against tom i mean exactly i've done him eight times in four games peter shilton i mean <laughs> at least i could get a boot for each game um, oh one's got to be coming its way brian surely no 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 he's he's right adamant about that that's so I'll, I'll, put it, I'll put it on post and uh, he might see it. Yeah, exactly. I, well, I'll let him know. I'll give him, a, I'll drop him a text and say, you know, watch out, Stag's after you. The golden Stag's boot. After you. The <laughs> golden <laughs> boot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> quick. I just want to quickly, just obviously we, we, we put together, we do this, it's called My Amazon 11, so we put together an, an 11. So, I'd like to go through just just quickly because you'd be talking about some great players, and I know it'd be you know people like to know you know the teams people would pick. So obviously, the whole idea is that you know you you pick an eleven of the players you you played with during your time at West Ham, which is you know as you basically listed about forty or fifty fantastic players I think you played with. So I know it's going to be quite tough, but it'd be good to just do it quickly because I don't want to take you for too long. So I said I'd only be a little time with you. So. Um, if if you had to pick out of the, for the for the stag eleven, who would who would be between the sticks? Who would be in goal for the stag eleven? Well, I'd, I'd have to pick Jim because yeah. Jim came there. He wasn't there for long, but he was very successful when he was there. And he, you know, at the time he was a pr very prolific sportsman. He was, you know, he was playing for for Leicester then, and um, he got he was top of the averages in the cricket that season in sixty four. 65, he got the European Cup and has come with us. And um, he was a very, very good keeper. He wasn't in, in the same class as, as Parksy or Ludo and then, but he was good. He was agile. He yeah. was a great kicker of the ball. Um, so I, I would, I'd I'll have to go for Jim. Yeah. So put Jim in. Yeah. Good shout. Bill, I said he, yeah. Bill, I didn't spend a lot of time with at West Ham, but he, I've got to have Bill in the side because he, he was there when I was there. Yeah. And, you know, from the career end he had afterwards, I mean, I'd really like to have Bill in my team. And I would, yeah. I would, but I would play Bill in the back four. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So put Billy in. I'm going to pick Kenny Brown because. Kenny Brown was part of the team, which when I went there, enabled us to get what we get, what we got at West Ham. Because he was part of that side, I told you, with Malcolm and Noel and John, when football changed at West Ham. Mm. And, you know, 400 of the, you know, 400 games for West Ham was, was still good. Yeah. Bobby, the other side of the back four. Yeah. And, um, It's, it's tough between Frank and Jack, but um, um, I'm going to go with, even though I think Frank was the best left back West Ham I've ever had, I'm yeah. going to go with Jack because he was part of my era and part yes. of my, you know, my successful time there. 
So I'm going to go with Jack. Yeah. Um, now we've gone four, haven't we? You were yeah. two in the middle now, didn't you? Can do, yeah. Um, well, Martin has got to be involved, of course. Of course. Um, so I'm going to go. I didn't play a lot with Trevor because Trevor was not around until a bit later on. Yeah, was of course, yeah, yeah. So, he did play a few league games when I was was at the club, but I'm going to go with Boise because he was my pal um, at school when we was eight years, nine years old. Crazy. I just find that so crazy, Brian, that, you know, the players you played with at school, I mean, I, I players who I've played at school, you know, and then you sort of progressed all the way up together. Well, it's, we had a left back. We had a left back at West Ham. We had an off license up the road to my house, Harry Kinsall. He, his son was at school with me, Roy Kinsall. Yeah. We played in the same team at Brampton Road in 1953. It's crazy. So I'm going to go with Boise. I'm going to yeah. go with Martin. Nice. And um, the two front men, I'm going to go with Jeff and Budgie. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, Budgie was phenomenal. And for, for how he was so involved with Jeff's career, mm. um, it, it, it really was amazing. And he was the 65 grand... Oh. He, he, he scored 100 odd goals for West Ham budget. Something like, yeah. And he was in the international. Um, Crazy. The wingers. Yep. Um, I would go with Scissor, Johnny Scissors. Yeah. I mean, he was a England schoolboy, he was an England youth, he played so many games for under 23s and God knows what. He never, um, unfortunately, got a full cap, but um, he was a big part of West Ham. Um, he scored in the cup final in 64. Yes. He was the youngest with uh, Kenyan that day to play in the cup final, so I'm going to go with his own. Wow. And um, I'm going to go with Peter Braybrook. Yeah, Peter Braybrook. Peter, Peter Braybrook had a fantastic career at, at Chelsea. You know, he... He played for the World Cup in 62 for England. And for 35 grand, I think we got a bargain. So um, there's, there's been some there's my... been some bargains, isn't there? You look through throughout the whole of West Ham's career, you know, oh, yeah. as you said, you know, even like even going to you know, going going to the boys of 86 and stuff like that well, a bit earlier, people like uh, people like Dev, you know, five yeah. grand. Five grand um, mental. What can you get for five grand over these days? Paid. And nothing. Yeah, overpaid. <laughs> I, mean, I know it's mental, it, right? What would he have become if it hadn't been for them injuries? Do you know? It's. Do you know I what? Mean, it's he was, like, he was really. Yeah, I mean, he was at the height of his career then, wasn't he? He was bang on then, Dev. Yeah. And um, you know, it's it happens doesn't it it seems to have i know it happens to every club but it seems to happen to west ham more than any other clubs you know obviously you've got dev and, and even like slightly like more towards the, the the young obviously people like dean ashton you know hit what he could have been as a striker for yeah. west ham. he got one what he got capped and in, yeah he got in training game, and yeah. he done himself training i mean i listen to him when i go over south end now i listen to him on the radio he's great on the radio yeah. You know, you yeah, just, you know, you know yeah. so, like in love with the game still, it's, it's amazing. But we, we've had some, we bought some, I mean, Paolo. How yeah. can Paolo, I'll wind everyone up about Paolo, but he was, <laughs> he was something else, wasn't he? Yeah. How can Paolo not get any honours hardly in football, not even a cap for his own country and, and be like that? I mean, Harry, if Harry wants a nervous breakdown, he goes and does it. He gets to sort of people, doesn't he? Yeah. When he, when he used to say, Harry, we're flying up to Newcastle. Oh, well, no, Harry, Paolo, no, no fly. <laughs> Shovel car, you know, like, and Harry used to go, and now Harry used to scratch his head. But I'll say, Harry, you bring it on yourself. Like, I know. It was, 
it, it, I mean that that era. I mean, obviously, that's I love that era in, in my sort of West Ham career, fan career, that, that Redknapp era. You had some incredible players, and it was a, a, in my opinion, that was probably the last era where football was fun. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It got, it's got uber serious at the moment. At the moment, oh, it's got a bit uber run, serious. We never really ever had any run like Paolo. No, 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 no. There's a one off. We never, we never get another one. No, no, no. no. Uh, a few pretenders, I mean, but we'll never. Yeah, <laughs> a few pretenders to the crowd. So uh, let's have a look at that. So that that's, so that's your team. I know it's I know it's in up on into a four four two. Um, Brian, you probably might be able to see it a bit, but you know that's that's a oh, that's a good team. People love to see the team. That's very very good. But I like that. There we go. I promise people I'll bring back the scoreboard thing just for, and then so it's all back there. So you got you know Peter Braybrook. We got Johnny. There's some great names that people will, will, will be doing some Google searching afterwards. Um, Brian to look at and look at their clips. You got Hursty, you got got Budgie Byrne, you got Peters, you got you got Roddy Boyce, you got Bonzo, Kenny Brown, you got Moro, you got um, Jack Burkett. Who I, I'm going to go and Google now because I don't know much about Jack Burkett and and Jim Standing in goal. Very nice. I like that. Yeah, I like that right. team. I mean, That's a great like team. Um, yeah, Jack. Jack's um, Jack. Jack lives quite close to me. Oh, does he? Yeah, he lives in South End. Jack. Oh, um, Southend. I love Southend. Because I've got, I've got the one of, uh, someone sent me the one of Harry. Yeah. His dog kept parking. He, 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 yeah, yeah, with Harry's one, he just literally, he he, he ran out of time because he was too busy talking about about the, the, the good old days. He was too busy talking about Bobby Ferguson and stuff. But anyway, anyway. I, 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 only met, I really only spoke to Paolo once. It was at Swindon. Yeah. We were playing at Swindon at Southend. And I had these, I used to get these Bobby Moore uh, bowel cancer shirts, which I used to send to um, Alex Ferguson. And he used yep. to get signed and send them back to me and everything. So I wanted one signed by Paolo. So I took one to Swindon and I knocked on the door of his office and he walked in and he was a bit, and he went, yes, yes, you know, well, what, what? I went, Paolo, I said, could you sign this for me, please? I said, this is. Bobby Moore about cancer fund. Well, well Paolo is with his friends, you know. We this or not, you know, we have get I said, Well, you know, this is a very, very good charity. So he went, Oh, he went, no, Bobby Moore, number six. I said, Paolo paid number ten for West Ham. <laughs> I said, funny enough, Chuck. I said, funny enough, Paolo, so did I. I said, no, I've got you been cut with cut I said, you are yeah. to, but thank you very much. And walked out the door and he's waving his arms at me. <laughs> He, he, brilliant he was fantastic i mean we had some brilliant some, some of the things that go on at west ham and go on at west ham have been amazing but yeah it's it, it's a fantastic club it's a great club and um, yeah the supporters are amazing yeah um you know they, they say what they they, they they go as they feel don't they? i mean yes but, um once um and, you know, boards of directors can't do it right all the time. Only the fact that in our day we never saw our directors. The only time we ever saw the directors of West Ham United was when they come for a board meeting and their cars was in the car park. Fair, yeah. And we used to never talk to them much. We used to call them Mr. Len, Mr. Wood. I'll tell you a quick yeah. story. When my dad was fifty two, he got made a done. Reg Pratt had a timber yard in Plast yeah. in, in Forest in, in East Ham. And um so he stopped one day, went, sorry to hear about your dad, Brian, you see, because I see him down at Howard's, he said, when I get some stuff, and he said, I'm at a ball and stuff, I said, I'll see, anything that occurs, Mr. Pratt, I said, I'd be obliged if you could think today. About two months later, he's, he's knocked on our door, and I looked out the window, and then I see, I said, Mum, get the cat in, I said, there's Mr. Pratt's downstairs, RHP, travel five, he come up, give my dad a job at 52, my dad worked for him until he was in his late 70s, and that was what, Football clubs was about. Yeah. Stopped me one down on the train. He went, Brian, it really all I said, yes, Mr. Pratt, thank you. He went, don't forget to get your car insurance, will you? Because like, they knew everything I went on. He was the chairman of the magistrates, <laughs> wasn't he? He knew everything that was going on there. Oh, I love it. But there you go. I love it. Uh, it's brilliant. Anyway, it's great Brian, man, look. I'm going to do this. Oh, chat. thank you so much. It's been so much fun. I, I, it's, I've loved it. I've loved it, and people will love listening to your stories and stuff. Thank you so much. It's been absolutely brilliant. Did, um, thank you. How can I get this back? 
so so i'm gonna so i'm gonna wrap it up and i'll tell i'm gonna wrap it up and i'll say i'll say goodbye to everyone then i'm gonna end it you stay on and i'll tell you how you can get it at the end don't worry don't worry okay My, yeah. I'll so anyway write it down because right, i'll text you don't worry we'll talk, i'll tell you and i'll text you bro don't worry man oh, <laughs> so thank you everyone for joining um for myself and for brian take care everyone stay safe watch those ads go with your eyes and i'll yeah. see everyone again very very soon oh there we go go on brian take care everyone much love bye bye <laughs>